How you doing, folks? Happy New Year. So at the time of recording, we're about one week away from NVIDIA's special address on the 8th of January, right before CES kicks off. And it's no secret that they're expected to launch their RTX 40 series super refresh. So I've been diligently watching all of the rumors unfold. And the one card that keeps standing out to me is the 4070 Ti Super. Yes, it's a dumb name, but I really think it could be a great card. And here's why. But first, we need to look back at the 4070 Ti non-super. So when this card launched, I was originally quite impressed, uh, roughly as fast as a 3090 slash 3090 Ti at around 800 quid. Um, but when you started to unpick it, it wasn't looking so good. Spending 800 pounds on a GPU and only getting 12 gig of VRAM made me uncomfortable on the get go. I could vaguely tolerate it on the cheaper non-TI 4070, but what concerned me was in top-end games, 12 gigabytes was starting to look like it was on track to become the new 8 gigabytes. In that, it's okay, but it's right on the edge of what's going to be considered acceptable to run a high-end gaming experience. And when you're paying £800 or more for a GPU, you shouldn't be anywhere near what is considered to be on the edge of being acceptable. You're spending £800. That should be, you know, slide all the way to the right territory. Drilling down deeper, and we come to the ugly business of the 192-bit memory bus on the 4070 and 4070 Ti. And this is where, in particular, the 4070 Ti started to come undone in the reviews, especially when gaming at 4K. The 192-bit bus just wasn't wide enough to get those big textures in and out of VRAM, so relative to a 3090 Ti, this is where you saw the 4070 Ti really start to suffer. Now, for context... Um, the prior gens 3080 had a 320-bit bus, massively bigger than the 192 we got on the 4070 Ti. Again, on the cheaper vanilla 4070, you could perhaps forgive the 192-bit bus, um, although it still made me grumpy, but on the Ti, it, it left even more of a bad taste. So fast forward to today, and courtesy of WCCF Tech, I'll leave a link in the description, we have a breakdown of everything we're expecting from the 40 series super refresh. So let's run through it, and hopefully you can see why the 4070 Ti Super is the standout card to me. We're expecting three cards, a 4070 Super, a 4070 Ti Super, love that name, and the 4080 Super. So let's start with the 4070 non-Ti Super. It's getting a nice bump to its core count, but look at that memory bus. It's still at 192 bit and it's only got 12 gig of VRAM. So really the memory config hasn't changed. Like the original 4070, I can semi forgive it of these things, providing they don't jack the price up too much on the Super Series. But for me, um, for those reasons, it remains a pass. Going all the way to the other end of the stack, at the high end, we've got the 4080 Super, which is essentially the full AD103 chip. The original 4080 also ran the AD103 chip, but it was a slightly cut down version. My guess here is that over time, the fabrication process has matured, meaning they're getting more chips out of the fabs that can run at 100%, rather than having to have cores disabled due to manufacturing defects. It's very common within silicon fabrication. But the VRAM and the memory bus remains the same. The VRAM's clocked a little bit higher, which is nice, but we shouldn't really expect huge performance gains here. Um, for me, I think the thing that will determine whether this card is a pass or a fail will be its price. I've seen 999 being thrown around, um, but honestly with Nvidia, you never know until the day. If it was 999, that wouldn't be the worst result. Um, I mean, sure, I'd love to see it lower, wouldn't we all? But you have to be realistic and kind of take into account market conditions. I'd be very shocked to see anything south of 999. And in the middle of the pack, we have the 4070 Ti Super. A silly sounding name, but if the rumoured specs are to be believed and it takes the price point of the current 4070 Ti, this card could be the sweet spot for a lot of gamers out there. Why? Well, first things first, it's rumoured to have 16 gigs of VRAM, so that's up from 12. And crucially, the memory bus is rumoured to be 256 bit. This gives us way more bandwidth for transferring those big old textures in and out of your VRAM. Both of these features make me much more comfortable when spending £800-ish on a GPU. Fair enough, it's not up to the 3080's 320-bit bus, but it's a damn sight better than what we have with the current 4070-4070 Ti. Relative to the 4070 Ti, we could be seeing a really nice performance uplift. Uh, for me, if all these rumours hold and the pricing is sensible, I think this could be my next card. The only thing that could possibly change this is if the vanilla 4080s that are currently out there suddenly plummet in price in the wake of the super refresh. Um, I can't imagine this will be the case for very long because they'll get all snapped up really quickly. So you're going to have to move quickly if this does become the case, if it happens at all. And I kind of doubt it. Um, I was hearing that actually the current inventory of 4080s and you know, the non-super stuff is actually flushing out quite nicely. So yeah, NVIDIA are pretty good at the old supply chain stuff. So I wouldn't hold out too much hope for that. 
let me know in the comments if you agree with my point of view. Um, if you have any plans to upgrade, I'd be keen to know what you're upgrading from. I'd love to hear from you. If you haven't already, hitting that like button really helps the video a ton and the channel too. And be sure to get subscribed because rest assured, whatever I end up with, uh, we'll be putting it through its paces on the channel. Let me know if there's any sort of benchmarking you'd like to see. I'm more than happy to take requests. Until next time, take the very best care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next video.